Go ahead, please. Andy Murray's tennis career is remarkable. Playing in the most fiercely competitive era of men's tennis, boasting arguably the three greatest players of all time in Roger Federer, Rafael Nadal and Novak Djokovic, Murray became the fourth arm of the Big Four. While his achievements have been dwarfed by the others, let's not forget his accomplishments. He ended Britain's 76-year wait for a male Grand Slam singles champion, winning first the US Open and then Wimbledon twice. He has three Olympic medals to his name, two singles golds and one mixed double silver, guided Britain to rare Davis Cup glory and became the number one ranked player in the world. He has also chalked up 46 titles in an era where silverware has been harder to come by than ever before. Murray's professional life has been a testament to his unbelievable work ethic and desperation to prove the doubters wrong. And yet what really sets Murray apart from others is the man behind the racket. The person who has cemented his status as a British icon, a three-time winner of the coveted BBC Sports Personality of the Year award and knighted by Queen Elizabeth II. But it wasn't always that way. While Murray's talent was never in question, the British public didn't exactly take to him during his formative years. Despite replacing Tim Henman as Britain's top-ranked tennis player in the mid-2000s, he had not won the hearts of the nation. At Wimbledon in 2006, Murray recalled passing a woman talking on her mobile phone who was heard to remark, that Scottish wankers just walked past. That same year, an attempt to show his dry sense of humour horribly backfired when, after being ribbed by Henman and journalist Des Kelly about Scotland's absence from the Football World Cup, he joked he would support whoever England were playing. He had just turned 19 and perhaps was unprepared for the sensitive backlash it provoked. With Murray yet to prove his obvious potential, he did not reach his first Grand Slam quarter-final until 2008, and without the headline-grabbing charisma of some of his rivals, the media needed no second invitation to double down on the public's scepticism. One Guardian writer branded him one of the most charmless sportsmen I've met. Others labelled him dour and whinger and a hypochondriac. While his talent and work ethic was always likely to propel him to the top of his sport, becoming a national icon seemed unlikely. His public perception was transformed overnight, in a moment of defeat rather than victory. A tearful runner-up speech after a four-set loss to Federer at his first Wimbledon final in 2012 melted even the iciest hearts on centre court and across the nation. As his voice cracked, he stood mic in hand and in floods of tears amid one of the longest standing ovations in the tournament's history. It didn't take Murray long to get over the disappointment. He beat Federer on the same turf a few weeks later to claim Olympic gold before twice triumphing over Djokovic at Grand Slam finals, first at the 2012 US Open before becoming Wimbledon champion the following year. Now a fully-fledged sporting hero in the UK, Murray started to get praise for his actions away from the court. In 2014, he hired Amelie Morismo, a former world number one in the women's game, as his coach. The move was applauded in many circles. Women coaching in the men's game had been a rarity to this point, and Murray soon lifted the lid on the sexist attitudes that were still present. When it first came out that I may be working with a woman, I got a message from one of the players who is now coaching, Murray told Elle magazine. He said to me, I love this game that you're playing with the press. Maybe you should tell them tomorrow that you're considering working with a dog. The amount of criticism she got in comparison to any other coach I've ever worked with, it's not comparable at all. When I was working with her, it was always her fault. Murray quickly became recognised as an ambassador for equality within sport due to his outspoken approach. He famously corrected a reporter who had described Sam Querrey as the first US player to reach a major semi-final since 2009. Murray quickly retorted, male player, with a nod to Serena Williams, who had won 12 Grand Slam titles in that time frame. Williams responded, I don't think there's a woman player, and there shouldn't be a female athlete, that is not totally supportive of Andy Murray. He has spoken up for women's issues and women's rights, especially in tennis, for forever. Murray continued to champion equality amid the backdrop of a potential merger between the ATP and WTA tours. 
When these discussions happen, it's quite important not just to see this merger through a man's eyes and to bring more women into the decision-making positions so that everyone's voice gets heard, he said. Murray's objections to sexism in sport haven't been limited to tennis. He expressed his fury at footballer Ada Hagerberg being asked to twerk on stage after winning the first ever women's Ballon d'Or. Another example of the ridiculous sexism that still exists in sport. Why do women still have to put up with that shit? He said on Instagram. To everyone who thinks people are overreacting and it was just a joke, it wasn't. I've been involved in sport my whole life and the level of sexism is unreal. Few have been willing to publicly challenge outdated attitudes as candidly as Murray, and he has rightly earned recognition for his off-court work, as well as his sporting excellence. For his services to tennis and charity, Murray, who is a UNICEF UK ambassador, became Sir Andy in the Queen's New Year's Honours list in 2016. What is striking about Murray is that he has changed very little from the heavily criticised teenage boy to becoming a knight of the realm. He always spoke his mind, always had a fierce will to win, and was always true to himself. What has changed is the public's willingness to engage with Murray the man as well as Murray the tennis star. Injuries may have dulled his talents, but when he finally hangs up his racket, Murray will leave tennis as one of the sport's true greats, a champion on and off court, who has earned the respect of his peers and the wider sporting world. The many titles he won will remain etched against his name, and he will leave behind many treasured memories for the success-starved fans in Great Britain. But his true legacy to the wider sporting world will be in his consistent and persistent drive for gender equality and progressive values, a torch he will pass on to others who come after him. There have been few ambassadors for tennis quite as great as Andy Murray.